Minga and Gumby were talking about the past adventure when driving Rosie the pink engine. The school didn't ask me about my neck telling me to drive her, said Minga. I'm glad my secret's safe. So is mine, said Gumby. I found a TARDIS in the shape of a police box. Goo told me about it the other day. And I've seen a program of Doctor Who made in 1963 and another in the 80s. I reckon you'll like the 80s version of the program. May I interrupt your talk? said Perky, who came into the kitchen. What were you wanting to ask Perky? asked Gumby. When you were talking about the TARDIS you told me about, I just had this thought in question, said Perky. Time machines are mythical, so how can it exist in real life when no one believes in reality? The TARDIS existed for many years, but if you're joining in the secret talk about it, no one must know about it, especially the newspapers, said Gumby. Tell you what, though, Ming has finished with school, so he can visit a mine that's just away from our house, only it'll be the last time. I beg your pardon, Gumby, said Minga slowly, but did I overhear you mentioning of we and can visit the mine? In meaning words, are we to go to the Wild West in the TARDIS? Yes, we are, Minga, said Gumby. It's the last adventure with the time machine. This year is 2017, but we'll stick to original adventures so that it won't be involved. I'll let you handle the levers. I only know trains, not time machines. Shall we then? said Perky. Let's find the toy shop. So they left the house to find the toy shop. When they got there, they found a camera crew talking to the shopkeeper about what they were about to take a ride in. Uh-oh, said Perky. We can't get in with them around. How are we going to get in without them noticing? said Minga. Ignore the camera crew said Gumby. 
I don't think they can tempt me to let the secret out. But I keep telling you, the TARDIS is just a model. They hurt the shopkeeper. Besides, it's already brought. The camera crew left. Hello, Gumby. I don't suppose you know why they're wanting to know about the TARDIS. Yes, we do, sir. Let's talk inside the shop. When they were safely in, Gumby told the shopkeeper that the TARDIS was kept a secret for years since it was given to the space section and how it was existing in real life. The shopkeeper understood what the case is about. I've been thinking the same thing. That TARDIS was given to me from a Time Lord. He made it for this shop, and it was never brought from anyone, said he. What you found is a TARDIS of adventures, so it's for display. It's a bit like my secret about driving a train, said Minka. Anyway, we might find a mine. Wish us luck, good luck, and thanks for the advice. Can't let anyone buy it. Gumby, Minga, and Perky went in the TARDIS. They set up a course, then took off. landed in a gorge. On the ground was a track along with the mine. They were thinking of going in the mine when they heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was the workmen who were working. Where to find what's left in the mine if you're thinking of going in it, you'll need hard hats, said them. They went to have a tea break. What are they finding in the mine? said Perky. Surely I can sniff it out, or another. We'll need transport, said Minga. Look, there's a train. Good idea, Minga. We can use it to get inside. But it happened to be Billy, who was on holiday. Hello, you see. You looking for anything found in the mine? He asked them. They're taking out some coal for Bertha. But I'm looking for path buffers at the far end. We don't know anything about a path buffers. What's about them that are important to you? Asked Gumby. It's a secret. 
underneath them is a box containing a book. I came here once and hid it. Now I'm needing it to be with me so I could give it to the museum back on Tasman's show door. We'll keep your secret safe, said Perky. But we better get you out of here after the book's found. They got in the cab off the engine, moved towards the mine, and started following the insides. The inside was very dark when they were in further. There were no lamps, only his headlamp could see the line. Breezy drafts were blowing from every hole. This takes us back to a flooding mine, said Minga, remembering her feet getting wet from the water. There's no flooding of water, said Gumby. I say, does anyone feel a cold draught as we go down? Keep my fire burning, said Billy. I think I know why it's drafty. They came to the end where the buffers were standing. There was a river beside it, and a chunk of ice coping with it. That was why they were feeling cold. Why did the workman tell you not to come here when there isn't any coal to collect? asked Perky. This is enough to freeze Gumby. We only work in the inside middle, Perky. They find it warm, said Billy. This end wasn't cold when I hit the book. I have better movements if I wasn't standing beside a cold river. Let's dig out the book, then look at it when we're out of the mine, said Minga. I'm feeling cold too. They got out of the cab, went to the buffers and started digging. When they'd finished, they found Billy's book. They then filled up the hole to clear up the mess. Let's get back. I don't think I'll come back again, said Billy. They set off back to the opening. On the way, they met the workmen who were waiting with the coal truck. Just in time, they said. You'll have to take the truck to Bertha at a station. I've caught a coat, sir, but I'll manage. Billy only made it up. He didn't want to get into trouble. He took the first load, then came back for more.
Having done two runs, they rested in a siding to look at the book. These are my days of living when I escaped Germany, said Billy. I lived in the mine till the ages came, and the hunt was on my tail. Contro wanted me to run a branch line, which I did, only once because I wanted to live in Tasman Sotor to develop properly with good things. Why did you come here? You almost look like a beggar, said Gumby. To get a job, said Billy. The workman accepted me to help with taking out coal. You kept your escape a secret, and they didn't know about it, said Minga. You're lucky to keep calm. Oh. The mine's closing, so I think it's time we should get you back to Tasman Sodor, said Perky. You must need a boat to get here. I don't need a boat. I use buffers, said Billy. But I like to travel at night. There's a town just away from here, and we'll have to roll it, said Gumby. They climbed in the cab, took Billy to the water tower, then steamed off to the nearest town. When they got there, they parked him in a shed. and went to find a room to rest. Anyone needs to sleep during the day when a task needs to be done in secret. Have we got time for lunch, Gumby? asked Perky. We're going to need it for this night journey. Yes, we do. I've paid for lunch, so we shall eat, then sleep, said Gumby. I hope the museum can respect his story, said Minga. The country is his home after all. Us too, said Gumby. Mind you, don't lose your bow tie. That'll blow our cover. <laughs>